Well, hello there. A lot has changed since the last time I've seen all of you. Uh, we did a little cleanup on the uh, old YouTube. I um, think we're going for a fresh start. And, uh, you know, fresh start, spring cleaning, clearing out a lot of the old. Some of it I like, some of it I might redo, but uh, at the moment I'm feeling like I need a clean slate. So we're going to start fresh. This will be the first episode of the Jazz Lord's Guide to Doubling on the various woodwinds in my collection. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Albano the Madman, America's Jazz Lord. You don't know that yet. You will. Soon. Anyway, so, let's just jump right into it to quote, uh, certain internet news YouTube personality. This right here is my contrabass clarinet. This is a LeBlanc 3 model 3 something. It's the uh, metal one down to E flat. Um, probably spent about 2500 on this guy. Um, need a little bit of work. Luckily I do my own bit of repair at home so uh, a lot of them were small leaks take a look at your octave system if you can get a get a decent little look at it through uh, through the camera lens there it is a nightmare to work on with all the different little linkages and all the different connecting rods and little push bars and whatnot that could uh, that could you know somehow come out of adjustment so it's an ongoing process but we got this playing and sealing pretty good uh the pads there uh there you don't shellac them there's no glue involved and most of the pads except for the few on the octave uh the register keys up here oh yeah it's not fitting in the frame you can see it though two of those pads those get shellacked in the rest of them are screwed in and shimmed like a flute um what else can we really talk about here? Right now, my setup, I'm using a uh, Selmer C-Star, which came with the instrument. Uh, it was, it is probably not the ideal. The sad fact of the matter is, especially for us doublers, we go to Selmer as a, as a kind of a, a go-to, go-to brand for mouthpieces. And I have a bass clarinet mouthpiece, a D, which is fantastic. They don't, not so much with the uh, with the codger base mouthpieces. Uh, there's a few little defects. The tables aren't even. The rails aren't even. Excuse me. Uh, the table is flat. Everything else seems okay, but I have a weird feeling if I brought this to an actual mouthpiece tech, they uh, they would probably actually be able to tell me what's really going on. Uh, it's this particular instrument is very resistant. And it's partially probably because of a few leaks that I haven't quite worked out yet. But it's very resistant once you're in the clarion, once you're in the uh, clarion uh, B, C, C sharp, D, E flat, and E. Those seem to be trouble notes. And judging from the very few videos of people playing them on YouTube, uh, it seems to be a common thread here. So. We're just, uh, we're just gonna go along. We're gonna talk a little bit more about how I got started because I was searching for a long time on any sort of proper, like, tutorial video at all. I mean, I'm a woodwind doubler. I'm mainly a saxophonist, you see. But I was looking for anything, any information. There's a couple of videos. Uh, Jason Adler, who's a, um, a known for contrabass clarinet playing, and, uh, you know, he has a few things up on there, some musical excerpts, more leaning towards the avant-garde end of the spectrum. You know, there's Sarah Watts, who's a marvelous player. Um, I actually was able to hear a couple of pieces she played on. She has an amazing tone. She also plays a $32,000 uh, Selmer <laughs> contrabass, which uh, that is, I don't have that kind of money right now. I don't even have new bass, new contrabass clarinet mouthpiece money at the moment, so... We're, uh, we're, we're going to be working with what we got. And that's what you're going to do if you're a woodwind doubler and your parents aren't rich. Okay? So, again, spend about 2500 bucks. 
okay with the mouthpiece. I'm happy with what I have at the moment. Setup for the instrument, it's, you just really need, when you're putting the instrument together, you just really need to be careful about how you hold the instrument and see, it's even, I even don't like how it's resting right now because we have these very long connecting rods, these very long rods here, and you want to be careful because they're durable enough, but if you give it a good squeeze, you will mess it up. You know, and the instrument isn't so heavy that you're going to have back problems, you know, trying to play it. It has a little peg, which uh, this is impossible for me to play seated, even on a high stool. I still, I'm short, so I still need a few books, you know, under my butt to, to keep me up. However, why don't we, uh, why don't we just get into particulars? Um, I have this set up with baritone sax reeds right now, and I know most of the, uh, Contrabass clarinet purists probably don't like that, but my experience so far with Van Doren, Diodario, and Leger uh, is they suck. They suck the unholy bag. It is they are terrible. All of those reads, I hated all of them. And the problem is, as the instrument becomes less leaky, I get a better idea of this actual sound of the instrument can produce and I originally started with Barry Sax Reeds because that's they're more commonly available they're a lot less expensive and they for the most part fit take a uh, take a little look at that they cover enough the table to seal and at this point I'm gonna have to be happy with that because these actually play fairly well I mean, in comparison to what I have, and I'm not going to be sitting here for hours working on reeds because I have a bunch of different horns, and I just don't have that kind of time, even with COVID annihilating most of the music industry. But why don't we give it a little, why don't we give it a little toot, shall we? We'll give it a little toot. I can't play any songs anymore because YouTube is very vicious uh, as far as their copyright claiming policies and the DMCA and whatnot. So uh, we're just going to go through the registers of the instrument. Basically, as I play, I'm going to talk and I'm going to describe a personal, my personal experience of playing this instrument. Like I said, there's no video. There's no proper stuffy old English person, you know, for 80 years old playing in the symphony, you know, their entire life, masters of the instrument. There's no one who actually came out and made a proper lesson video and I am not the guy to do that I'm gonna preface everything I'm about to say I'm not the guy to do that because I'm not an expert with this instrument but maybe this someone will find this helpful okay we're gonna do a little cut a little little uh, movie magic here so I can uh, so I can kind of get everything set up and ready to go all right okay we are back all right let's get uh let's get to playing a little bit so Basically, with this setup right now, I can subtone very easily in my lowest registers. So it's all the way up from its lowest D flat all the way up to the high C. And I can pretty much do that in one breath. Which, you know, with this setup, maybe the Barry Reeds, the Barry Reeds are going to be a little strength-wise. A three Barry Reed is going to be a little softer than a three Contrabass, I think. I'm probably wrong, but then again, I'm not, an equi I'm not a gear guy. I'm just a musician, so. Uh, but anyway, so I can produce a pretty, pretty good sound at a low volume. And uh, the instrument responds very well. It's just, like I said, we have a trouble spot from Clarion B up until uh, about E flat or E and then it starts opening up again you know once the other re register vent is open so we have so I mean there's some challenges with the instrument basically I have to keep a very loose armature I'm gonna be adjusting my mic as I do more of these I'll work out a system I, I don't care to do that right now so I have a loose armature but it's firm enough to seal everything off. So I'm, it's not like I'm trying to, <laughs> it's, I, there's still a little bit of pressure, but it's a fairly loose armature open at the back of the throat. I find that what helps 
get those problem notes out is to voice the note, which essentially, to me, is sing the pitch. Uh, so that's about a, about a concert B flat. That's about this clarion C right here. Uh, uh, and the way... Now, obviously, it's not speaking as readily as I would like, and that'll just come with practice. But how my throat and my oral cavity form when I sing that note is a rough approximation about what it has to be to produce a note on the instrument. And it seems to help me get those problem notes out. It has a, uh, so metal instrument, it kind of a little brighter than what I've been hearing, but it doesn't have a deep, rich sound like a lot of the wooden instruments. But I'm not a, uh, I'm not a deep, rich player, so to speak. But uh, I'll play a little bit more for you and talk as we go. Should be uh, a good point to note. Altissimo notes on this instrument do not function in if you're a clarinet player, if you're a normal B flat soprano clarinet player. The actual fingerings that sort of work on this instrument really do not are not recommended to use on any other of the clarinets. Maybe for trills and whatnot, but. So for here, normally on a, let's do this without hitting the ceiling, with a C sharp, you're going to do one, two, one, two, and the, uh, the E flat, A flat key. And that seems to work pretty well. That one kind of pops right out. But if we lift the finger up and go to the D, notice here, there's no vent. There's no vent hole. So... I'm so I'm not so good with with actual acoustical physics of these type of instruments. So maybe because our our key is right here, but the actual tone hole is up here. So you couldn't. There's no real way. Maybe a secondary key or something. Selmer seems to have figured it out, but LeBlanc, I, however old I think this is from the 70s, they didn't they didn't do that. Um, so we have to find another fingering because if I go from the C sharp. C sharp to the D. It's there, but it doesn't want to speak. So a good workaround fingering is actually for the D, just the register key by itself. So we'll go C sharp to D. So we go C sharp D and the E flat is the uh, A flat, is the uh, A flat key. The problem is we want to go to uh, E after, and the there's not a whole lot of fingering charts. There's a few, but the fingerings on this instrument don't speak, or a lot of them don't. There's only very few fingerings for the E, and the recommended one I always see is just the, <clears throat> is the, uh, is our uh, uh, A key? Excuse me, I'm thinking saxophone. I'm my brain, my brain. When you play a lot of different woodwind instruments, your brain wants to go in a thousand different directions. But anyway, it's the uh, A key right here in your throat. Um, doesn't want to pop out. Doesn't want to speak. Maybe that's a practice thing, or maybe it's just I have to invent a, a fingering for it. Uh, as far as the rest, um, F, the one that seems to have worked is uh, register key, thumb key, A key, and then on the right hand, one, two, three, and your uh, E flat, or actually for this one, we go to the uh, the C sharp, F sharp key. But uh, it doesn't want to pop out all the time. That's probably practice though. But I can go down to it from G, see if it wants to work. So G is just, G is the same four fingers down on the right hand, one, two, three, and uh, C sharp, F sharp. 
and then the uh, one register key and thumb. Let's see if it wants to pop out today. So no, the answer is no, but it's there. It's there. But again, that's practice. I mean, I just got this instrument a couple of weeks ago. But again, it's with voicing. I need to sing that all and get my throat and oral cavity adjusted and the air, actual amount of airflow that's coming through to get this note to sound. So the part of the practice is it gets easier over time. But I can walk down chromatically all the way down to the D from the G from the uh, from the G up here. But then the the E doesn't want to speak. But the E flat will come, the D will come, the C sharp will come. So I need to find a good stable fingering for E. And there might not be. I might have to make some compromises as far as lipping up or down and maybe venting, but that'll take some time. But again, this is one of the challenges of this instrument. So if you're a woodwind doubler and you just got one of these things, um, these are some of the challenges you're gonna come across. So let's get reset. With practice, they'll come. So those are some of the challenges. And then once we get to, uh, so for G sharp, one, two, three, one, two, three, C sharp key. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That one comes out. So from C sharp, I can go up to G, for, to the A, which is one, two, one, two, three. And that seems to work really nice. Then add uh, E flat, A flat. Then uh, one, two, one, two. Uh, excuse me, two, three, one, two. And the uh, and the E flat seemed to work for the high high B. Or actually for a. So we have our uh, B flat. Then B, uh, two, three, one, two, E flat key. That one we have to lip down. It's a little sharp, and then for C, we go. We put number. We put one down. Now this is all register key, thumb key, and then we're basically over belowing the clarion F, and we can go chromatically up. Up there. Once we get to that. Uh, once we get to that. The E there starts to become a little resistant, so I have to work out some new fingerings for that. But you know, you it's easier to play in the higher, higher, the higher, excuse me, harmonics on a contrabass instrument because the harmonics are not actually that high and very attainable. It's not like you're trying to squeak out altissimo on a sopranino sax, which we'll get to later on in this series. But uh, yeah, but overall, the uh, a couple of suggestions I can make from my limited experience is this. If you're going to get an instrument like this um, and you don't have a lot of money, do not be ashamed of getting an instrument key to E flat. Even plastic instruments at this range, if you set them up with a decent mouthpiece, they will sound good, provided you're willing to put in the effort to practice it. Um, also, a thing to note, there's no water key, so a lot of spit collects in here so I find I have to if I'm practicing um, if I have a practice session let's say I spend two hours with the instrument I'll probably have to find a place to dump this about you know every 15 minutes or so keep it clear so that the air is unobstructed because the water will pool up right about here that's no good for anybody and that's pretty much uh that's pretty much all I really have to say. When you go for instruments like this, especially if you're a doubler and you're on a budget, and we'll have some uh, interesting budget horns in my collection that play very well, provided you set them up and you're willing to practice through a few of the quirks. But learning some repair work is a necessity. And now, thankfully, when YouTube, when I was just a wee lad and YouTube was just beginning, 
uh, there wasn't a whole lot of information on YouTube. Now there's plenty. And so you can find, look on YouTube, see how to change a cork, how to change a pad, all sorts of stuff. Any information you want is now at your fingertips. So it would behoove you all, my lovely jazz lords, to go and start learning or, you know, find your repair tech and pay him some money, buy him some coffee, ask him, ask if you can sit him watch, watch him provided you, you know, pay for his time, you know, because, you know, as much as we all like to be generous, you know, time is money. So offer your repair guy, you know, I want to sit with you for an hour while you work on my own instrument. Can I pay you my hourly, your hourly rate so I can sit and watch you and learn a couple of things, some basic stuff. And if they're cool with it, great. If not, well, you know, some people don't want to be bothered while they work. But anyway, see if you can do that. You know, that's always a suggestion. People are willing to learn. People are willing to teach. You'd be surprised who's willing to teach, provided you're willing to pay them enough money or pay them what they want to teach you. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling. But so um, it's pretty much what we have, all we have for this instrument right now. It's my own little personal experience. And uh, I hope uh, eventually some of the heavyweights on this instrument, which is fairly heavy by itself, it's probably about 13, 14 pounds. Um, some of the heavyweights of this instrument will actually put out proper videos and, you know, and really get into it. But from me, from a doubler perspective, this is the experience I'm having at this present point in time after owning the instrument for a couple of weeks. Um, would I get a different mouthpiece? Probably. Would I switch to... Probably or probably not. I'll spend some time with this and see if it works. Again, Selmer doesn't make crap, but at the same time, uh, they're not known for their contrabass pieces, and they they are of um, inconsistent quality, let's say. So, but uh, Robner ligature seems to work. You know, I gotta clean this thing. But uh, right now I'm on Barry reeds because that's accessible to me, more accessible than contrabass reeds, and they seem to play better than anything I've gotten so far. So uh, we'll just stick with that until it's uh, until I find something that works. Anyway, I think that's about it. We'll just end on me blowing a bunch of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of you know, non-copyrightable nonsense because uh, that's all you can get away with on YouTube these days. <laughs> That's a uh, practice. I always got to practice. But anyway, I've embarrassed myself enough. So uh, hopefully this has helped you a little bit. And uh, oh, also, let me show you. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you one more thing. A good stand that was recommended to me on the uh, on the Facebook one of the Facebook clarinet forums. So I'll show you that in a second. Just as a uh, just as a final little little uh little tidbit if you're looking for something to set this up on the cheap all right all right so this is a k&m bassoon stand and uh, we'll have to tweak the uh tweak the angles here so you get a good view of the instrument on the stand but so the safest way to do it can we at least see the yes we can so we're gonna line it up here we're gonna make sure that when we put the instrument on the stand over here we'll make sure when we put the instrument on its stand it's not it's gonna be we're gonna try and avoid having it sit on any of the connecting of any of these rods because these will bend there this instrument seems to be tough but it will bend but for this uh, stand cost hundred and thirty something dollars off of uh, Amazon actually I believe I got it and it's sturdy it feels tough and it hasn't collapsed yet so I have more confidence in this than the Hercules stands I own for this instrument. But anyway, let's uh, plop it on there and you'll see how it sits. And what I think is a 
relatively safe position for the instrument. Ah. All right, so check it out. So right now, let's not drop the camera. See how it's kind of sitting? It sits on that peg right there. But that's uh, that's stable. You want to want it sitting on the bell. There's not uh, not uh, you might be able to you might be able to do it, but I'm not gonna risk it. It seems with all the weight on that one spot, it seems to be fairly stable, fairly stable the way it is. But you can see how it's uh, how it kind of sits sits there. And now we're going to I'm juggling so many different things right now. So we're gonna go and we're gonna see. So. Where are we? Yeah. So you see right here how it's how it's sitting. It's sitting against, really sitting against the tube, maybe a tiny bit here. But uh, that's it seems to be seems to be safe enough for now. Nothing's bent yet. So uh, yeah. So there's some suggestions for you. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's your first woodwind jazz musicians woodwind guide doubling guide starting at the bottom hope you enjoy this and if it did help you give a like and subscribe please i'm restarting relaunching the youtube channel so uh again hope this helps and i hope my thing is continued to record let's find out it did